Did your eye doctor tell you you have blepharitis? Want to know what that is? Don't worry, it's not just dirty eyelids. If you're interested in finding out, keep watching. everyone, I am Dr. Rupa, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, and eye makeup health. So if any of that is interesting to you, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. So maybe you found this video because your eye doctor just recently diagnosed you with this. And it sounds really scary. It sounds like something is seriously wrong with your eyes. First, what is blepharitis? Blepharitis is simply inflammation of your eyelids. You may feel like there's something inside your eyes, that there might be burning or stinging, redness, you may even have tearing, you can become light sensitive, your eyes can be itchy, when you wake up there's a lot of gunk in them, and it can even cause dry eyes. I know I said that you might have tearing, but it can also cause dry eyes. Now some of the more serious consequences of having blepharitis are actually because of the tremendous inflammation, your lashes may actually fall out. You can have blurry vision and the lashes that regrow may grow misdirected, something called trichiasis. And that's not a great thing. You can also have swelling of other parts of the eye like the cornea which results in blurry vision. So blepharitis can actually be a very serious eye condition in that it causes a lot of problems. It makes people very miserable. About a third of patients have blepharitis. So you're not alone if you have just been recently diagnosed with this. So what are the risk factors for developing blepharitis? Well, someone like me, a woman in their 40s and 50s, that's one of the most common risk factors and it is why I see it quite often in my own practice. But there's a lot of things, environmental, hormones, immune system, and even your nutrition can all play into the development of blepharitis. They've done studies and they found that people that work in office environments with a lot of air condition, or if they're spending a lot of time on computers, they are more highly at risk for the development of blepharitis than those who aren't. Nutrition plays a big role as well. I've done a whole video on foods for healthy eyes, but omega-3 and even omega-9 supplementation or eating just a diet that's rich in those fatty acids is very helpful at preventing or at least slowing down or making better the symptoms of blepharitis. Other risk factors, if you have oily skin, if you have rosacea as diagnosed by your dermatologist, some people have a lot of ocular allergies like myself, and last, dandruff, because it's all kind of part of a very similar type of systemic disease. All right, so let's get into exactly what is blepharitis. If you've watched my videos, you know I'm, I love talking about those meibomian glands. So to review the meibomian glands, you have about 30 of them on your upper and lower lids. They're located where your lashes are and they make the oil for your tears so that your tears don't evaporate so quickly. And in a condition like blepharitis, what happens is they get trapped with bacteria, dead skin cells, and the quality of the oil that they're making is not nice and thin, um, like canola oil. Instead, it's, it's very uh, crusty and it's getting clogged up in the glands. So that way the oil is actually not getting into the tears where it needs to be. Your tears are not just made up of water. You might think that tears are only water, but they aren't. They're actually made up of oil, fat, and water. And you need all three in a really good composition in order to have a very nice, healthy tear film and to see clearly. Your tear film is responsible for a large percentage of the clarity of your vision. People don't realize it. Dry eyes can significantly affect your vision as can blepharitis because it causes dry eyes. So what happens in blepharitis is you've got all those dead skin and the bacteria. Your skin has a lot of staphylococcus and streptococcus and staphylococcus can actually produce a toxin that's really irritating to the surface of your eye, to the white of your eye called your conjunctiva and even the clear part of your eye called the cornea. This can result in inflammation, scaling and crusting of your eyelids. The other thing that staphylococcus can do is it secretes a biomatrix. And what that means is it's basically like a sticky residue. So it traps the bacteria on your lid margin 
And so it, it can't escape. And that's what leads to all of those symptoms of dry eyes and ocular surface diseases. So all of the treatment regimens are targeted towards that of just opening up those oil glands, combating that inflammation and getting rid of the bacteria. So that those are kind of the three hallmarks of the treatment strategies. Now, here's the thing. Unfortunately, there's no cure to blepharitis. It's something that we can manage and we can make a lot better but it's something that has to be consistently maintained in terms of the treatment. So what do you do to treat it? Now you know what it is and you know you're not going to go blind from it, but it is very, very annoying and can be very difficult to live with. The first thing is a little bit of self-care. You know, you might not think of it as self-care, but it's warm compresses and lid hygiene. And I'm sure your eye doctor told you about them and you might think, hey, give me the eye drops, give me the antibiotics. I promise you these actually work if you do that. For maintenance, you want to do these about one to two times a day. And if you're having a flare of your blepharitis, you wanna increase it to about two to four times a day. So how do you do this? Well, first, warm compress, just like what it sounds. You take a washcloth, you put hot water on it, and you let that heat soak in on your eyes closed. You can also use a eye mask. You can toss it in the microwave. There's all different types of eye masks. I'll link them down below in the info. But that heat is what's just going to soften the oil in your meibomian glands. And then right after you've done the warm compress, when things are nice and loose, that's when you want to perform the lid massage. So you can do this with a clean washcloth or a clean finger, and you're just going to gently massage and get rid of all that trapped debris and the scaling and the crusting that's blocking everything up. You can use a little bit of dilute baby shampoo to do this. You can also use some tea tree foaming cleansers or tea tree oil. It doesn't need to necessarily be tea tree oil that is specially formulated for the eye, though I will link to some of those products because I do like them. It stings a little less. You could take something over the counter and just, again, dilute it 50-50. So making sure that you're not using something too strong. And of course, if you have a reaction to anything, you want to stop it immediately. If you're using a nice washcloth, use a different washcloth for each eye. That's very, very important. And there's also, if you don't want to do it just with a little towel, there's a ton of different lid wipes on the market and they're made with all different types of products. There's ones that are made from hypochlorous, some that have Clearadex, all different types of medications that are a little bit helpful, not just a little bit, they're very helpful at getting rid of the bacteria and the trapped debris, as well as targeting Demodex, which might be something that you might have. And Demodex are just lash mites. And I know they look super gross. There you go. There's a little picture of them. They're actually pretty common. And the only way to combat them is with these types of lid wipes or foam that has the uh, antibiotic in them, the Clearadex, to be able to target them. You really want to make sure that you're just getting into the lid lash margin. And you might even need to pull your eyelid away from your cornea so you're not really rubbing the surface of the eye. When you're doing it, you can use a whole variety of things, salt water, baby shampoo, tea tree oil, foaming cleansers, or even hypochlorous sprays. And I'll list all of those down below. They all work differently for different individuals, so you can try them and see if you have any success with them. And I did mention Demodex earlier, so those Clearadex, you can get it as a wipe or even as a foam. Uh, if it comes with a wipe, it's Clearadex 4%, and it's a foam, it's 2%. The main ingredient in it is for terpenol, which is really helpful at eradicating those lash mites. You don't want those guys living on your lashes, and it just contributes to all of that stuff, <laughs> all of the scaling, the crusting, and the discharge. You can buy the Demodex foam on Amazon, and I will link below as well. So that's how you cleanse your eyelids. And then there's other treatments that your doctor might recommend. First might be a topical antibiotic to combat the staphylococcus and the streptococcus, which are proliferating along the eyelid margin. Second might actually be a topical steroid drop. Again, trying to get at the inflammation of the lid margin. If that's not enough, your eye doctor might actually put you on an oral antibiotic. Typical oral antibiotics include doxycycline or clindamycin. We can't use doxycycline in kids younger than 10 because it can affect your bone and teeth development. So your doctor, if you're going to a pediatric ophthalmologist, your child's doctor like myself, 
um, might recommend an alternative antibiotic for that reason. But typically doxycycline, minocycline are ones that we routinely use because there's almost always a component for some people of rosacea and it can combat that as well. There was even a study looking at using a Z-pack for blepharitis and having some good results from that. But usually we have to do about three months of treatment with oral antibiotics if it's really, really severe. Okay, so now if none of that works, what other treatments are available? There are some devices that are available at your eye doctor's office that can actually help with your blepharitis and just kind of jumpstart your treatment regimens. First is Lipiflo that's been around. It's by Johnson & Johnson. And basically what it does is think of it just like a heat massager for your eyelids because once it really applies the heat directly to the meibomian glands, it can express them and just get rid of the clogged particulate matter, the debris, all the bacteria. So it's 12 minutes on each eye and it's a closed system. Some of the studies showed that people that had Lipiflow had benefits for up to 12 months. I would say typically, in office, we see less than that, that patients usually only get benefits from their treatment for anywhere from three to six months. For the people that it works for, they are really excited about the benefits offered by Lipiflow. A second device is called New Lids, and that's actually, it's kind of like an electric toothbrush for your eyelids. So everything is trying to basically massage and get those oil glands open and patent and making a more thin type of uh, oil secretion. And this one you can actually do at home. And with the little massager, you're applying it to the eyelids. And again, it's just opening everything up. It has a sterile disposable tip and you attach it to the end of the unit. And then you use a lubricating gel as an interface. And then the tip gently vibrates as it's placed on the eyelid. So you do it for 30 seconds for each eye. And in their pilot study, they found that the symptoms of dry eye were much improved after using new lids. And I have to say, I know the ophthalmologist that created this device. He operates at the same surgical center that I do. He's a local Hawaii guy. So of course, I'm always going to try to support local people, but that is new lids. So that's an option as well. The third type is called Zest. And I mean, there's even more than this, but a third one I'm going to be mentioning is um, Zest. And again, produced by an ophthalmologist. The in-office kits are something you can do. And then they also have a maintenance version as well that you can take home with you. It has this gel formulation, which is actually an okra polysaccharide complex, which is interesting. And you apply the gel in a digital fashion. You just use your finger and then apply it or sterilely. Um, you apply it to the eyelids in a circular motion. And then the treatment kits, again, just express and exfoliate those meibomian glands. The fourth is IPL, which is used for the dry eyes. Sometimes you need several treatments to be able to achieve success. IPL stands for Intense Pulse Laser, and there's been a lot of success with this particular form of treatment for dry eyes. Remember, because blepharitis does tend to go hand in hand with dry eyes. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please let me know by liking, subscribing, and commenting about your experience with blepharitis. I would love to hear it. And other video topics that you would find of interest. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye-bye.